Hey guys, it's May May, and today's top tip has to do with our Crocodile Corner Chopper by We Are Memory Keepers. You guys have asked me a thousand times for best practices for this guy, and I'm going to show you the best way I know how to use it. Number one, when you get this in the package, these little wings are closed. You want to make sure when you open these, you open them all the way, okay? I have in the past opened them or thought I opened them, and they'll be something like this. That is not opened all the way, and when I try to put a piece of cardstock in, it doesn't lay right, and it frustrates me, right? So if I open these out all the way, my cardstock will then fit all the way into the bottom. Now, where I am mostly guilty of having a poor cut with my um, chopper, and it happens all the time, is number one, not putting this guy all the way in to the stoppers so that it's nice and square. Sometimes I'll just kind of stick it like this and punch, and I get an uneven punch. And that, you know, if I don't get this all the way in, let me show you. Like if I go like this, See how that's not really what the corner rounder is supposed to look like? It's supposed to be a nice, even round, but I didn't push that all the way in. So in order to get a nice, even uh, punch, what I like to do is put my um, card sock in, and I like to rest my thumb here. I'm not pressing, really. I'm just supporting the card sock. Then you want to punch easy, nice and smooth, okay? That is a much better curve. It's still not perfect, and I'm going to tell you why in just a second, but that's a much better curve. Now, sometimes our cardstock cuts are not perfect. Are you shocked? Sometimes your corners are not perfect. I did this one very exaggerated for you to see. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See how this line is straight on this side, but see my terrible angle right there? Okay, I want to show you what happens when they're not perfect. So sometimes you blame your punch when in reality... The paper is the issue. See how that one looks? It almost looks like an angle punch. That's because my paper was not square when I put it in. But if I come down here to this end, where it's nice and square, and I line this guy up, I get a much better curve, okay? Actually, like it's supposed to look there. Now, the other thing. If you overpress, let me show you. If I press too hard, look what I get. I get these little, um, they're like hangnails. <laughs> Can you see that little guy? You can hardly see it. Let me bring some white cardstock over and lay it there. You can kind of see that little hangnail. If you overpress, what it does is it, and I'll show you. So I'm going to press a little harder. There's a good one. Okay. See that little hangnail right there? Uh, bringing it real close. There we go. A lot of you guys tell me you get those. That to me, from what I have discovered, is from overpressing the cardstock in. Also, going too fast. Just place your cardstock in, make your little punch, pull it out. Look at there, nice and even. That looks nice. This one doesn't have any hangnails. There's a nice curve. Looks really nice. So the biggest thing to me is not over pressing. It works the same with your other punches. Here's your scallop punch, scallop and stub punch. You want to open that all the way. I want to slide this in here like this. I'm not even going to look. I'm just going to make sure it's in there by feel and then punch that one out and look how beautiful that is. As long as you take your time, and you lay these guys in nice and even. I've already punched that one several times. Here we go. Let's do the stub side. If you lay them in nice and even, okay, a little bit of pressure, but not pressure pushing, just pressure holding it in place, and then do your punch, you get a really nice punch. Now, that's not hangnails. That's actually fuzz, and that is because, did you see how slow I went through that paper? I think that it kind of tore instead of punched, but that's my best practices. The biggest thing is make sure this is all the way open. The second thing is make sure you have your paper resting against them and nice and neat on the inside. Number three, slow down as far as, let me explain that. I don't want you to slow down as far as punching through. I want you to slow down putting this into the machine or into the punch because many times we just kind of go like, we just kind of go and punch and it's not right. So slow down, put it in, line it up, and then make your punch and you get a much better punch that way, okay? Um, those are my top tips for that. I, it seems kind of strange, but to be honest with you, I feel like these guys all have a learning curve, and I also feel like mine are really old. This one's not. This guy right here has been worn out, and sometimes um, they can be a little finicky, and you'll kind of get to know them. That is just my experience, because I've had some that I punch, and I'm like, oh, this one does really, really nice, and then I'll have my older ones where they kind of need sharpening or what have you, and some people say, and I don't do this. There's a reason I don't, but some people say if you fold up aluminum foil and lay it in, and you can punch that aluminum foil to sharpen the blade, you can try that. If it works, that's great. The reason I don't, even just saying it 
makes my jaw hurt. <laughs> I have like a phobia of metal against metal. And I literally telling you guys that makes my teeth start to hurt. So um, I cannot, I cannot do it. Now I can get other people to do it for me, but I cannot punch aluminum foil Oh, I can't even say it anymore. Okay, so <laughs> there you go. That's your top tip today. Uh, even pressure, nice square corners before you ever put it in. Slow down setting it inside and then punch smoothly through. All right, I hope that helps. Talk to you again next time, guys. Bye-bye.